Hey everyone, uh, Rice again. So, I know this is really, really soon after my last video, but I just couldn't wait to get this out to you guys. Uh, what we're looking at right now is the new design that I've come up with for the, the hidden blade. It's the new mechanism that I want to use in all hidden blades from now on. Um, there's a lot of advantages that I can see with this one over the OTF design, which is what everyone else uses and it's what I've been using in the past as well. Um, it's the one from those OTF knives where the blade will flick in and out that you see all the time on hidden blades. So I'm essentially trying to revolutionize that, change that up, and uh, yeah, I think this is the next step in the, uh, the design of the hidden blade. So um, we'll get a little bit more into the details in a second. So first of all, advantages. Why would you want this one over a OTF design? Well, basically, this is a thousand times more reliable because in the OTF you are relying on momentum to extend the blade and to retract the blade. So if you don't know how it works, go look up a video on an OTF mechanism or watch one of my older videos where I showed the mechanism as well. But essentially you have a blade that is locked in at the back and when you pull the slider forwards it will create tension on a band and then as soon as the lock is pushed out the way from the slider it will slingshot the blade forwards so that it can lock into the front and then this exact process in reverse to retract the blade okay uh, but why is why is that mechanism not good so really when it comes down to it when that blade is between the back lock and the front lock it's in limbo land there is no um, direct force pushing that blade out so if you were to have something in front of the hidden blade when you're ejecting the blade it will just bounce off and it will be loose and then you'll have to pull it uh, to get it to lock back in at the front or the back okay so with this design you will not have this issue the system will actually push the blade through um, the target so even if there is something obstructing uh, obstructing the blade sorry it will uh, push through that so I remember in one of the games I can't remember exactly what scene it was but uh, um, the, one of the assassins holds the blade up to someone and he extends the blade through him and that just would not be possible with the OTF design but with this design it is definitely possible okay so that's the first advantage second advantage is this will work underwater as well so again we have the issue of resistance of water on the blade with this design it's not going to be any issue it will still extend and retract in the water um, and lastly the other advantage is this mechanism is a lot more robust and it will be able to take a lot more of a beating than the OTF so this gives us many advantages. We can have designs such as Connor's Hidden Blade, which has like a dagger attached onto it. And we can also have designs like the Hook Blade, which obviously needs to be quite strong if they're going to be holding a body weight. And the OTF design just simply cannot handle that uh, type of abuse. Whereas this one will definitely be able to handle it. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's basically just a lot more reliable, a lot more efficient and way stronger. Uh, and one of the kind of the other minor advantages as well is that it's silent. So when you use this hidden blade, it's going to be dead quiet. Um, you won't be able to hear it extend or retract, unlike on the OTF, which makes a very noticeable uh, click sound when it extends and retracts. So it's going to be nice and silent as well. Um, keep in mind, this is just the rough copy. I just wanted to see if the, the, the gear system would actually work like what I was envisioning in my mind. And turns out it does. So don't really focus too much on the aesthetics of this thing yet. Uh, this is just like a pure proof of concept just to see if the mechanism would actually function properly. So what we have is this is kind of like an x-ray view of the blade. So obviously the, the final blade would not have this massive hole in it. Um, this is just so you can see what's happening in the mechanism. This pit would all be filled in. And the, the gear track I would make a lot smaller. So it would be a lot smaller gear on the inside. But what we have back here, if I just hide the blade for a second, we have a whole set of gears. So in total we have six gears and each gear to gear is a one to two gear ratio. So for every one rotation of this gear, it's going to be two rotations of this gear and so on and so forth. So pretty much we go one and then two, then we go four, six, eight and so on and so forth till we get to 32 spins on the final gear okay so that is a lot of spins so from one rotation of this gear we're going to get 32 rotations of this gear so it's a 1 to 32 gear ratio which is phenomenal so that's more than adequate uh, to extend and retract our blade my prediction is we're only going to need half of a rotation of this gear which is going to be 16 rotations of this gear in order to extend 
and retract the actual blade segment itself. Okay. So in terms of the actual mechanism here, it's this is completely original. I thought of this, I've been thinking of this for a while, and now finally I'm going to do it. I'm going to start prototyping it, and hopefully we can get a nice working model that I can show you guys in real life. But uh, for now, it's just proof of concept um, that I've made on the computer. So yeah, um, I, I really wanted to get this out there because I had a feeling that um, this design was not going to be <laughs> original for much longer. Um, what tends to happen with me is I have an idea and I leave it too long and then someone else comes out with it and uh, I just didn't want to have that hassle so I'm just releasing it now um, so that you guys can see that I was original in, in designing this so yeah um, what we have is the gear system we have the toothed blade on the internal segment here you can see those gear teeth running along and then we have the base. Now, all that's missing from this mechanism is a string and ring system that will rotate this gear here, which I've already thought of. I just need to model it. Um, you can pretty much use the the Amnra wheel, and but put it on a uh, kind of like a pivot system, so a pin will rotate the gear when you rotate the wheel with the string and ring. So that's all sorted. Um, it's going to be really awesome. I might add like a secondary lock for the blade, so it's not just the gear holding it out, but yeah, let's kind of have a look. So if I show you here, we spin this gear and the blade will extend. And then when we rotate it back, the blade will retract. Okay, just like that. So nice and easy. So you don't really need much um, rotation on this back gear to extend and retract the blade. As you can see, the teeth lock into that gear. Now I haven't set the the gear ratio distance between this gear and the, the linear gear um, correct so that's why you can see the tooth's kind of into it a little bit there um, but yeah I'm, I don't want to mess around with that too much I don't really enjoy doing that so um, I just wanted to see if this would work but yeah it, sh it should work um, I'm excited to try this out but yeah this is the original uh, design by me um, for the next hidden blade system so this will re replace the OTF system so yeah um, if you guys like it uh, stay tuned for more updates hopefully we get this into a final product version and we can start getting rid of those OTF hidden blades which are now obsolete all right awesome thanks guys see ya